Donna Nelson is one of America's most exciting painters today. She is best known for her immersive, gestural, primarily abstract works employing unorthodox materials and processes, such as canvas staining with acrylic paint that seeps into the other side of the canvas to create her groundbreaking two-sided paintings. Nelson was born in 1947 in Grand Island, Nebraska, where her parents were very supportive of her art as a young child. Her father was a surveyor and thought that she would make an excellent lawyer because of how smart she was. Nelson received her BFA in 1968 from Ohio State University, where she was encouraged to attend the 1968 Whitney Museum Independent Study Program in New York City. This was the first year of the program. There were all painters, and Donna was the only female painter. And so I started out as an abstract painter in the Whitney program, kind of, but very theoretical. And so that has allowed me to do really anything. And then my attitude about being a painter is I know nothing. I'm not as good as Van Gogh or Cezanne or any of the great painters. So to me, that's a very freeing thought. And it allows me to treat painting and studio activity as peer research, learning, lifelong learning. That's what I'm interested in. This was an exciting time to be in New York City as a young artist in the late 60s and early 70s. The New York scene was coming off its high of abstract expressionalism like Jackson Pollock, William de Kooning, and Helen Frankenthaler. Andy Warhol was also starting to work with acrylic paint from Sam Golden, who founded Golden Acrylics. We can see that Donna Nelson was inspired by the action painting of Jackson Pollock and the canvas staining of Helen Frankenthaler. However, Frankenthaler's method of pouring paint directly onto the unprimed canvas was not exactly the best for archival processes. Oil paint is extremely erosive to everything it touches. That is why you need a glue, rabbit skin glue like the old masters used, or an acrylic ground to protect the cotton slash linen fibers. During the 1970s, Nelson's early art explored geometric grid-based abstraction through intuitive and systematic modes of pictorial construction. In the 1980s, Nelson shifted to painterly representational work featuring ordinary interiors, landscapes, and cityscapes portrayed with emotional realism and unfussy physicality. Figurative paintings such as Summer Man offered centralized, life-size, everyday subjects. These paintings were still made out of oil paint because acrylic paint colors were not as vibrant as oil yet. It wasn't until the early 2000s that acrylic paint finally caught up with oil paint. 2003, where Nelson started her canvas staining using acrylic paint practice. She was at an artist residency in a potato field where she took a watering hose to a canvas to disrupt the image. In order to build up the physicality of the canvas, Nelson also applied paint-soaked muslin to the canvas. Instead of hanging the painting up on the wall and only showing one side of the painting, Nelson decided the back side of the canvas was just as important as the front side of the painting because the color absorbs to the other side as well as mixes with the other colors. For Nelson, there is no hierarchy of front side or back side because both sides influence one another. Nelson explains that using steel stands, platforms, bricks, and cables seek a more conscious, intimate viewing process where you have to physically walk around the entire painting unlike just staring at one painting on the wall in a big white box style contemporary art gallery. Because Nelson teaches down the street from the Philadelphia Museum of Art where Marcel Duchamp's The Bride Stripped Bare by her bachelors, even the large glass currently resides on view, I am convinced that this piece of art has also affected Nelson's work deeply. 
The work employs the use of chance, the glass breaking, the double sides where each side influences one another, as well as the steel stands that we see also in Nelson's work. Nelson currently resides in between New York City and Philadelphia, where she teaches at Tyler School of Art at Temple University. She is a beloved teacher whose presence looms large because of her infectious joy of art making and her amazing storytelling skills of her life as an artist.